Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to show you a practical example of how diffraction gratings are used in science, and in this case we're going to see an example in astronomy. Let's say that we have a telescope and we look at a galaxy, a galaxy that's moving away from us. Therefore, the light coming from the galaxy is redshifted, and we want to know how fast the galaxy is traveling, which depends upon the amount of the redshift. The greater the redshift, the greater the velocity away from us. So, we collect the light, and we send the light through a diffraction grating, knowing that the H-alpha line, that is the line associated with an electron jump from the third level down to the second level, when an electron jumps from the third to the second level in the Balmer series, it sends out a wavelength of exactly 656.3 nanometers of photon of, with that particular wavelength. Now what we know is that when the galaxy is moving away from us, the light from that will be shifted and we're able to figure out how much that shift is. And once we know how much that shift is, we'll be able to calculate the velocity of that galaxy. I'll show you how to do that. But first of all, let's say that light goes to the diffraction grating. The diffraction grating has slits in such a way that the distance between the slits is 2,000 nanometers, 2 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And we measure the, we measure the existence of the red light, the H-alpha line. We measure the angle of that to be 19.2172 degrees. So we send that through what we call a culminator, and then we collect the light and we measure that exact angle compared to the central maximum, and if we, that's the angle, we should be able to figure out how much the wavelength has shifted from its normal 656.3 nanometers. All right, again, what we can say is, since that this is going to be the first order, we can then say that the extra distance traveled has to equal one wavelength, and that is also going to be equal to d times the sine of the angle theta, which means that theta is going to be equal to the arc sine of lambda divided by d. So, well, in this case, we don't know what lambda is. They told us what theta is and didn't know what lambda was, so we're going to then go ahead and calculate lambda. So, instead of doing it like this, knowing what lambda is and knowing what d is, we're going to find theta knowing what d is and having measured lambda. So, in this case, lambda, uh, measure theta. So, in this case, lambda is going to be equal to d times the sine of theta, and so, therefore, d is 2,000 nanometers. That's the slit width, or at least the distance between two adjacent slits. And we multiply times the sine of 19.2172 degrees. All right. So what do we get for the wavelength? So we take 19.2172. And we take the sine of that. And then we multiply that times 2,000. Equals, and we get 658.30. So we get 658.30 nanometers. All right, we know that this is the lambda measured, or at least that's the wavelength based on the measured angle. And so we can then see that it has shifted by 2 nanometers. This would be the normal wavelength that we see from something that's stationary. This is the wavelength of the light that we see from a galaxy that's moving away from us. So therefore, the velocity of the galaxy is equal to the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second, or 300,000 kilometers per second, whatever units you prefer, times the shift in the wavelength. Notice it went from 656.3 to 658.3. So that's going to be 658.3 nanometers minus 656.3 nanometers divided by the wavelength that it normally is when it's not moving, 656.3 nanometers. So this is therefore equal to 186,000 miles per second. Multiply times 2 divided by 656.3 because the units will cancel out. So we get 186,000 times 2 and divided by 656.3 and that gives us 566.8 miles per second, 566.8 miles, miles per second, and that would be the speed at which that galaxy would be moving away from us. Again, it all comes down to having the ability with a diffraction grating, where the slits are really, really close together, in this case they're only two micrometers apart from one another, we send the light through the diffraction grating, it will bend, or diffract so to speak, because of the interference pattern, 
you will be able to measure that exact angle from the central maximum to where it, it appears so we measure that angle from that we can calculate the wavelength that we're seeing that's the distance between the slits times the sine of the angle that gives us the exact wavelength of the observed light we know that it's shifted notice that the shift is two nanometers so therefore we take the speed of light times the shift divided by the original wavelength if it's not moving and we can calculate the speed of that receding galaxy all because of the ability to separate the light to such fine angles using a very very good diffraction grating and that's the usefulness of diffraction grating so of course use it for all kinds of scientific purposes like that but that is one really good example of how we use that and that's how it's done mm -hmm.